In this video, we're going to discuss normal approximation to the binomial, uh, as well as how and when to use it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So normal, normal approximation of the binomial is often used in, as an approximation for discrete events when the number of possible events is large. So recall when we were using our binomial distribution, that was a discrete probability distribution to estimate the number of times that we would have six voters say they are satisfied when we had a sample size of 10. Now, you may have experienced that when you increase your sample size or the value for n, you get to a point where your calculator no longer compute it. Um, 100 factorial is simply too large a number for your calculators to handle, um, and you may get an error message. So how do we solve for those types of problems? Well, one of the ways that we can solve for problems where we have a large number of events or our sample size is large and we're still dealing with kind of a binary outcome, a yes or a no, a win or a loss, a satisfactory or not satisfactory, is norm this uh, approach called normal approximation to the binomial. So when we're doing that, we have to look at what would otherwise be likely a binomial type solution and we have to determine if the conditions are met first the observations must always be independent of each other that that's kind of the if they aren't independent of each other it's a non-starter but assuming the events are independent of each other we can then move on to our second condition which is what is known as the success and failure condition that's where n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times q is greater than or equal to 10. So you'll remember that the, uh, the relationship between p and q, so q is equal to one minus p, therefore p is equal to one minus q. And so we remember that relationship from working with our binomial equations. So when n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times q is greater than or equal to 10, you have a situation where normal approximation of the binomial might be appropriate. Now, because the normal distribution is a continuous probability model and the binomial probability model is a discrete probability model, we need to apply the continuity correction factor when we use continuous models to model a set of discrete events. And we're gonna talk about that more in a second. So what is the continuity correction factor? So recall that with a continuous probability density distribution, probabilities are computed as areas underneath the curve. As a function, the probability for any single value for the random variable is zero. Thus, uh, to approximate the binomial probability, we need to add and subtract 0 0.5 from x. So we add 0 0.5 to x or fewer and subtract 0 0.5 to x or greater. So just to give you an example here, if we we're working under a standard binomial probability model, we could compute the probability that x is equal to 12. But when the number of events or your sample size is sufficiently large, we have to use normal approximation. Now, what that means is that we're applying our normal distribution and we're saying, what is the probability that x is equal to 12. Well, in a continuous probability model, the probability that x is equal to any discrete value is equal to zero. But that's not very helpful if we're trying to use normal approximation to our binomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our continuous normal probability model and we're going to add our continuity correction factor. So in this case, when we're, where we were trying to calculate the probability that x is equal to 12, we're going to add and subtract the continuity correction factor to both sides, which is 0 0.5. So 12 minus 0 0.5 is 11.5. 12 plus 0 0.5 is 12.5. So the best way to learn something is to do some practice problems. So let's go ahead and dive into our practice problems. So a binomial probability distribution has a probability of success of 0 0.2 and n is equal to 100, or our sample size is equal to 100. What is the mean and standard deviation? Well, we recall that our expected value is equal to n times p. 
well, this is zero point, sorry, we'll keep this in the right order, n times p. So 100 times 0 0.2, where did these values come from? Of course, they're given to us in our question. So 100 times 0 0.2 gives us an expected value of 20. Our standard deviation, just recalling back to our binomials, and if you need to review, go back to the video on binomials, is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So the square root of 100 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, right? Where q is equal to 1 minus p, so q is equal to 1 minus 0 0.2, so Q is equal to 0 0.8. So 100 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 gives us the square root of 16, which of course is equal to four. So there we have our mean and our standard deviation. Is this a situation in which binomial probabilities can be approximated by the normal distribution and we're asked to explain? Well, we're assuming observations are independent and n times p is equal to 100 times 0 0.2, which is equal to 20. Um, so n times p greater than or equal to 10. Yes, we have that condition checked. And n times q, which is equal to 100 times 0 0.8, which is equal to 80. So our condition of n times q greater than or equal to 10, yes, right? 80 being greater than 10 and 20 being greater than 10 for n times p. So both, both conditions are met here, n times p, n times q, both are greater than or equal to 10. And we've assumed that the observations are independent of each other. So yes, this is a situation in which we can use normal approximation to the binomial. So what is the probability of exactly 24 successes? <clears throat> so C. Well, let's just draw, just for fun, our normal distribution here, right? We know that we have an expected value of 20 and we have a standard deviation of four. Just drawing some of our standard deviations on here, 16, 12, eight. So what is the probability of exactly 24 successes? Well, this means like, what is the probability that is exactly 24? So in this case, we're going to have to apply our continuity correction factor. Why do we have to apply our continuity correction factor? Because the probability that X is equal to 24, a discrete value in a continuous probability model is equal to zero. It's not very helpful to help us solve our, our question. So we'll just apply our continuity correction factor. So the probability that 23.5 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 24.5 is effectively what we're asking. So let's go ahead and calculate z scores for each one of these values. So z is equal to 23.5 minus 20 divided by four, right? I'll just review how we did that, right? Just recalling that our Z score is equal to the observed value of X minus the expected value of X divided by our standard deviation of X. So 23.5 minus the expected value, which was 20 
divided by our standard deviation, which is equal to 4. So 23.5 minus 20 divided by 4 gives us a Z score of 0 0.875. The Z score associated with 24.5, so again, the observed value of X minus the expected value of X divided by the standard deviation of X is equal to 24.5 minus 20 divided by 4. which is equal to 1.125. Okay, so now let's visualize what this is really telling us. So now that we have two Z scores, we can draw our standard normal distribution, right? We're centered around zero in our standard normal distribution, and we have two Z scores. One here at 0 0.875, and the other one at 1.25. Well, sorry, 1.125. And effectively, what we're being asked is what is the probability that it falls in this yellow shaded region? So we can do that. The probability, let's, let's go back to green. So the probability that 0 0.875 is less than or equal to Z is less than or equal to 1.125 is equal to the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.125 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.875. So <clears throat> we're going to look up 1.125 or 1.1 three since we only have two decimal points on our Z table. So let's go to our Z table. We're going to just clear this. So 1.1, 1 1.13 on our Z table, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 1.13. 1 so 0 0.87076. 0 0.87076 minus 0 0.875 or 0 0.88, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, go across. Zero point eight eight gives us this value right here, which is zero point zero point eight one zero five seven. So we take take that probability zero point eight seven oh seven six minus zero point eight one oh five seven gives us 0 0.06019. So that is the probability that X is equal to 24 using our, binomial, our normal approximation of the binomial. And then finally, what is the probability of 18 to 22 successes? Well, the probability that 18 is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 22. Well, we're going to have to apply our, our continuity correction factor to both of these, given that we want to include the value of 18. So this becomes the probability that 17.5 is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 22.5. So we can draw it out. What does this look like? Right, centered around a score of 20. And we're interested here, 17.5, 22.5. Point 
five. We're interested in this yellow shaded region here. So what are we gonna do? We're just going to calculate our Z scores. <laughs> so Z is equal to 17.5 minus 20 divided by four. So 17.5 minus 20. divided by four is negative 0 0.625. And then 20 Z is equal to 22.5 minus 20 divided by four. So now we have our, we can draw our standard normal curve here. We'll just draw it right here. Right centered around zero. And we're asked, we're given some Z score here, which is 0 0.625 and negative 0 0.625. And we're asked to find the green shaded region here. So the probability that negative 0 0.625 is less than or equal to z less than or equal to 0 0.625 is equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.625 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 0 0.625 so we're gonna to go to our Z table and we're going to look up 0 0.625. In other words, 0 0.63. So let me just erase a few of these here so we're not confused about what's going on. 0 0.63, which gives us 0 0.73565. Zero point seven three five six five minus negative zero point six two five or negative zero point six three negative zero point six we find three so we trace our finger down here negative zero point six three which is this value right here 0 0.26435, 0 0.26435. So we can go ahead and do that. So 0 0.73565 minus 0 0.26435. Gives us 0 0.4713. And there we have it. We've learned how to use normal approximation of the binomial as well as how to use the continuity correction factor. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.